What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Dense Pixels Podcast. I'm your host, Brad, joined by my co-host, Micah. Hey. Just us two this week. Um, normally, we would be talking about Destiny Shadowkeep up front. We're saving that to later in the show. There's a lot to say. There's a lot of thoughts. Uh, I'm, I, I, will, I will tease it. That's what they call a tease in the business by saying uh, that Destiny has never been more exciting to me than it is right now. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. Mike, anything else new for you or same same old shit as far as uh new games go? Uh same stuff. Uh, for some reason I had money burning a hole in my pocket and I bought um I already, I bought, I already uh, like this. <laughs> <laughs> I bought Mark of the Ninja for my Switch because it was on sale for like fifteen dollars. And I really like that game. It's a it's a stealth game that's not like anxiety inducing or <laughs> uh completely frustrating. And um that's a positive. All right. Very good. Not a lot to say besides that though. So I'm not, <laughs> you may like it, but I don't know if it's uh if it's yeah, I mean, be great it's, for everybody. You else. know, it's, it's, it's a stealth game. So it's, what, what would it, you, what would you liken it to? Isn't it like Tenchu basically? Um, it's like a 2d, uh, it's like a, I guess it's like a 2d Tenchu. Um, but only in like the stealth sections are, incredibly um like the light and dark the the light and dark sections of the game are incredibly uh pronounced so you go around and and when you're skulking around in the shadows you can't see the entire screen Mm -hmm. you only see um uh your immediate like circle of vision and everything else is just kind of grayed out um, until you, uh, until you enter into light. And then if you go back into darkness, then you are aware of your surroundings. Um, but it's one of those things where your character is just skulking around in different, um, in different like crevices and stuff like that. And he is uh paper thin, you know, two, three bullets and you're done. Uh, um, it's like a it's like a a Metroid style stealth game, and um, it was it was fun. Fifteen bucks. It's fifteen bucks. It's 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 fine. Very it's cool. Fun. I'd like to play it, but uh, right now my Switch is still the Slay the Spire uh, machine. So I have <laughs> I have thirty five hours invested in that game so far. Oh, a, lot, a lot of spires, <laughs> spire slaying. It's very very good though. Um, so new releases for you guys this week. Actually, a slower week uh, compared to what we've been getting the past few. Concrete Genie comes to PlayStation 4. This looks like the latest, uh, like, indie darling PlayStation game. Like, their first-party studios always have really cool indie titles, so this looks like oh, the next one okay. for them. All right. I'm yeah. aware of this. Uh, the Alliance Alive HD Remaster comes to PlayStation 4. Trine 4 comes to PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. And the Switch, at least, I'm not sure about the other consoles, also has a four-pack for $50 that you can get all four trying games with that's not too terribly bad they're still making trying games yeah man they're they're good they're popular so yeah uh, i guess i i played the first trying i i don't like the whole physics aspect of it mm. and that's that's the hook of the game right like you have three different characters that uh that do three different things and everything is physics based and um nah I'm, I'm good. I liked it well enough, it's just, but not enough to play through. I, th- I think I played through a f- half of one and part of two, and that's been the extent of my time with trying. Yeah. Uh, ukulele and the Impossible Layer. This is a new ukulele game, but this is actually a 2D side scroller uh, done in that uh, in that fashion for PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. We'll have to see if Carrie plans on picking up this one because I know that she got the original uh, when it came out a couple years ago. And uh, Killer Queen Black comes out for the Nintendo Switch, uh, the much ballyhooed uh, arcade. Uh, I don't even know what you'd term this as, uh, but it looks awesome. Um, I've heard it's awesome, so might be looking into that one at some point as well. It's only thirty bucks, also on the Switch. So it doesn't have anything to do with the band Queen. No, it does not have to do with the band or the song Killer Queen. Uh, that's a no for me, dog. So. No, uh, it does. I'm I'm looking at a video. It does actually look kind of cool. Yeah, I've I've heard. So basically, like this game originated in arcades, and it like you can only play it on like a six person arcade unit, basically. Um, mm-hmm. But apparently, like when it's 
in the arcade, it's an amazing experience. Like one of those, like put your quarters down on the table type of things and everyone's gathered around it watching people play. Um, we'll see how well that translates to, to the console experience, uh, with Killer Queen Black. So, but looking forward to it because I've heard, I've heard some buzz, no, no pun intended. I've heard some <laughs> buzz about this game. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, so we got that to look forward to. Uh, something to look forward to. I'm not good at them. Uh, check out youtube.com slash dense pixels and hit that subscribe button. Um, every week we post clips of this show that you are listening to right now or you're watching and maybe haven't hit the subscribe button, hit the subscribe button. It helps us out. Uh, go to, go to densepixels.com slash premium to sign up for all of our premium content. Now look, we do these shows, you know, the free shows, TMP, Dense Pixels, Black on Black Cinema, um, not in that particular order. And um, and we love doing it. And we hope you love listening to them. If you do, oh boy, you will very much enjoy the premium content we have at densepixels.com slash premium. Uh, I would say the flagship show of the premium network is, uh, look forward. Oh, it's gotta be. It's the only one that releases on a weekly basis. So yeah. And that's where Jay and Andy discuss, uh, politics, but in the TNP fashion. So it's not just a bunch of, you know, talking heads who think they know everything and just, you know, spouting off gibberish. No, it is too stupid talking heads. Uh, just spouting off gibberish um, and swearing. And uh, Jay, the owner and proprietor of this establishment, has promised us uh, today that the next episode, uh, the episode that will release on uh, October 8th, he promises that this is worth signing up for. <laughs> this one episode is worth signing up for because of all the shenanigans that are going on in the world right now. Um, if that's not enough, you get your boys, Brad and Micah, talking all things James Bond and spy movies with the men with the golden tongues. Uh, we recently did an episode ranking... Uh, our favorite and least favorite cold opens. Right. It'll drop this week. And uh, much like every episode, it's amazing. Uh, you also get uh, episodes of airing of grievances where myself and Jay talk about Seinfeld. Uh, we go through every episode of Seinfeld and we relate it to our lives. Um, and uh, am I, th- am I, oh, and we also have, Shows like No Time to Bleed and We Watch Trash, where we just watch movies that we like and just kind of shit on them. Yeah, it's it's a good time. <laughs> so that's densepixels.com slash premium. Subscribe to this show, TMP, Black on Black Cinema, wherever you get uh, your podcasts. And coming distractions as well with the spoiler-free review of Joker. Uh, from nice. Jay and Terrence. Uh, Micah, your segue was perfect. You could have said, speaking of look forward, and then you could have gone into the premium discussion instead of mm-hmm. slavishly mm-hmm. sticking to the format as it is on the docket. Uh, you see, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm like Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on to the news of the week, it is a very PlayStation centric week here. Um, so the, the thing, so the thing that drove me nuts last week is while we were recording the show, a huge news announcement happened, uh, that we couldn't comment on. So you had to wait a whole week where now the story is ice cold, uh, (laughs) but still quite mysterious. So suddenly last week, uh, a tweet came out from PlayStation worldwide studios that said, quote, it is with great emotion that we announce the Worldwide Studios chairman, Sean Layden, will de- be departing Sony Interactive Entertainment. His w- visionary leadership will be greatly missed. We wish him success. We Sorry, we wish him success in future endeavors and are deeply grateful for his years of service. Thanks for everything, Sean. That is literally the only information that we have gotten about the president of Sony's <laughs> Worldwide Studios leaving with no... Preamble, no pretense, no prediction, no nothing. Sean Layden, who was with PlayStation for 29 years, 
<laughs> has left Sony. Sony's been quiet. He's been quiet. Sony hasn't even issued a formal press release on this. They love issuing press releases. <laughs> they release press releases for everything. So we are left to baselessly speculate as to the reason that Sean Layden uh, is no longer with Sony. First of all, I, of course, am heartbroken. I was upset when when my dad left. Uh, this new stepdad came in. It took me a couple of years to warm up to him, but eventually I did. And then he left too. No one stays in my life, Micah. <laughs> I can't keep I can't keep a video game father figure around to save my life. Now, the most interesting speculation I heard about this news is that he and uh, PlayStation Europe uh, studio head Jim Ryan uh, have been kind of butting heads recently and have been not really on the same page recently as far as like their philosophy for the future of PlayStation. And it's supposed that Sony interactive entertainment kind of sides or has is more in line with Jim Ryan's vision of the future as opposed to Sean Layden's. And so perhaps Sean Layden saw not, not not necessarily the writing on the wall, but he, you know, found it. This was a good time to step aside. It's just bizarre that he's leaving a year before new consoles are coming out. Yeah, that's, that's, that was, that was my thing is that, um, you know, this is when like coups happen, right? right? Like is Microsoft going to come in and just do a perform a hostile takeover? Of <laughs> um, I'm being silly, but, um, yeah, you wouldn't, this is, this is very odd. The fact that not the fact that the guy's leaving, but just the, the circumstances upon his, Upon his departure, you got the new console coming out. You got no, no um, fanfare of of this guy leaving. He was he was the face of the brand for a while, and um, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's bizarre. Like I hope it's I hope it's something like you know this guy and this other guy just didn't get along, mm-hmm. and nothing like you know this guy. Likes to have sex with children. Well, I, I don't think Sony would have, if that was the case, I don't think Sony would have even sent it. Like, it, you would have had a much yeah, more nothing, tersely nothing, worded statement on Twitter if that was the case, I think. Yeah, nothing. I don't think it was anything nefarious, but uh, it's just, it's very odd. I'm, I'm a very negative person. I like to think the worst of people, especially when they leave. Um, they leave because the guy's only like 58. Like, he's not even 60 yet. And this is, I don't know. It's just very odd. It's very odd. I'm very curious. Uh, I wonder what the real reason is. Well, I suppose we'll find out eventually, but I just find it bizarre that in, in the whole week since this news dropped, we have heard literally nothing from nobody. And it's and apparently it's not like Sean Layden isn't on Twitter. Like he's like liking tweets yeah. and stuff he, like he, that. Yeah. He just retweeted something four days ago. Right. So it's like, it's not like he's a wall. Like he just is staying silent. That makes me wonder if he's going to a competitor, possibly. Ooh. But that would also be that would also not make a lot of sense either, because I would imagine that in his contract he has he has some sort of like non compete where he's barred from being able to go to a direct competitor for you know a fairly lengthy period of time. It's usually six months is kind of the standard um, in most industries. Mm-hmm. So maybe he'll just be quiet for six months until <laughs> until he just up, shows up at. Stadia or something like that. You know what I mean? Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so just very, very interesting news. Of course, it had to happen while we were recording last week. That was that was the theme of the TNP Studios uh, <laughs> podcast network last week is major news happening late, after, after you know, while, during or right after, you know, recording an episode of something. Because I had to get on a special episode of Look Forward two weeks ago for the same, same uh, reason. So... Fucking yeah, wild, man. Yeah, the universe hates us. Yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, PlayStation Now uh, is down to just nine ninety nine a month. So we've railed on this show quite a bit about how PlayStation Now at $20 a month is way too expensive, especially in the wake of Microsoft's uh, game, Xbox Game Pass coming out and kind of being a very popular, especially in the wake of Gears of War uh, 5 being a major, major, uh, not, I'm not going to call it a major seller, but a highly played game, thanks to <laughs> thanks to Game Pass. Uh, perhaps on the heels of that, because they saw that success, or maybe this was in the works for a while, uh, you can now get PlayStation Now 
for just ten dollars a month or sixty dollars for the entire year. Uh, still much more expensive than TNP Studios Premium Network for just five dollars a month or fifty dollars for the entire year. I'll let you decide what the better value is. You, you know, hearing brand new amazing podcasts or playing old video games. <laughs> But to celebrate this news, uh, PlayStation Now has added God of War, Grand Theft Auto V, Infamous Second Son, and Uncharted 4 to the service. So if you're a subscriber, you can play those games to your heart's content uh, until January 2nd, 2020, when they will be removed from the service. Oh, and then damn. they'll have new games that'll <laughs> pop up instead. <laughs> they're, trying to, they're trying to hurry up and hook people in and then, uh, and then take away the, uh, I don't know. One that was game of the year for a couple of years ago, and one that was game of the year, uh, what two years ago, and and infamous, and the second best Uncharted game. Like, uh, all right, do you think, um, how do you think this? You don't think really that this is going to stack up against uh, Game Pass? Not yeah, just no, not one price. to one. Just, well, it's it, the price brings it to. I'm sure it'll be much more widely adopted. But where it's not going to stack up to Game Pass is the, just the fact that you don't get new releases on there. Nor yeah. should nor should you. Sony knows that you'll pay sixty dollars to play their games when right. they, when they come mean, out. So I mean, it's 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 not a bad thing that that's the case. But no, it's Xbox is still going to be leading this charge in terms of like the subscription services. PlayStation is probably not even going to release numbers for this. They never have before. So yeah. I don't expect them to start now. Much. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is not for me, but um, if you, uh, if you're coming in late to this console generation and um, you know, you, uh, you want to play some games, uh, you know, these uh, God of War, Uncharted, they ain't, they, ain't, they ain't bad. They're pretty good. I mean, yeah, so, if, if you can binge them all in a month's time, that's a great deal, playing $10 to play all those. Yeah. So, so um, the most surprising news of last week came in a random press release that dropped from Sony that said Sony's crossplay, or actually, no, they didn't even make a press release. The news just dropped. Sony's crossplay function for PlayStation 4 has now completed its beta phase and is a full feature for developers to make use of. What does that mean? Does that <laughs> mean that every game is going to be crossplay that wants to be now? That's what it sounds like. That but... is what it sounds like. But the fact of the matter is, Sony hasn't said a lot about this. Huh. Um, Sorry, the, new, the news came from a from an article, speaking of Jim Ryan, uh, CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, uh, exp- was talking to Wired and just kind of just mentioned this off the cuff. Huh. And, I mean, is it, is it because, is it because we're at like the end of this console generation and Sony has a firm foothold in the, in the console wars of, of, of this generation that maybe they've decided to go ahead and, and, and for lack of a better term, give the people what they think they want. Well, uh, it's interesting you say that Mike, because later in that same article, uh, Jim Ryan also says, I'm quoting here, the track record of the incumbent platform winning the next time around is not a great one referring to the console generations. So the major thrust of my executive energy is to avoid complacency. Hmm. So perhaps you have hit the nail on the head and they're just uh, setting themselves up for uh, to, to try to maintain their dominance in the next console generation. Hmm. So we will see. Uh, but yeah, just a random random news. There, there's no new games that have announced the feature yet or, or without a lot of fanfare. It's just, hey, it's it's available now. OK, I'm I'm more concerned about um, I'm more concerned about the the consumer reaction to this. Um, just because I like pointing out hypocrisy and, um, uh, you know, I want to know if people are going to be doing this and how it's going to be received. I want to know how it's going to work and yeah, yeah. All right. Let's do this. All right. Uh, speaking of cross play, uh, of course, Call of Duty Modern Warfare is going to feature cross play comes out later this month. Uh, not surprisingly, there's a PS4 pro bundle. Uh, coming on October 25th when the game releases, that'll have a PS4 Pro uh, with Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Not a special Pro. This is just going to be their regular 
SKU bundle. So if you've held off on a pro, been thinking about it, you really want Modern Warfare, why not wait until October 25th and pick this bundle up? Including the I'm, I'm, Spec Ops mode. All right. I mean, look, I, if you're going to come out with a bundle, right? Like, I don't know. Make it special. I mean, they're doing that two weeks after that with the Death Stranding bundle. As much as I don't really care for that game, like, yeah, like, make it make it special. Like, there's uh, there's got to be some lunatic out there <laughs> not named Micah that 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 uh, collects consoles, right? I don't think like this is just gonna be their holiday skew. Like, they'll have this bundle in stores throughout the Christmas season. You don't need to have yeah. two like special console bundles. I don't think in a in a in one holiday period, that'd be a little overkill. I guess. Because then there's poor pe- there's then there's poor people like you who would buy both systems because <laughs> they can't resist. And plus, those Call of Duty bundles have not been great so far. Like the 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 uh, World War II one was like a camo print. It was really disgusting. Like the whole system was camo yeah. print. I guess the Black Ops Three one was okay. If you remember what that one looks like, didn't it have just that big three on it? Yeah, on the top of like the that? console. Yeah, but it yeah. did also come I with mean, the gray and orange uh, PS4 DualShock controller as well. Which I was not a fan of, but <laughs> I mean, like I'm a fan of I'm a fan of like textless logos, but at the same time, like I want something a little more than just a Roman numeral. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what I want. I'm just like everyone else. I complain and complain and complain and don't know what I want. So to wrap up the uh, the news here on PlayStation News Central this week, uh, PlayStation. Uh, For software update 7.00 is coming that week. It's going to have some new features in in it, uh, mostly around parties and remote play. So currently uh, doing party chat on PlayStation 4, you can have eight people. That's going to go up to 16. Uh, There's also going to be chat transcription available for players in the U.S. You have to use the PlayStation second screen app on your phone in order to, to use that feature. Uh, It's also going to improve network connectivity and audio quality, both of which are very welcome improvements that are much needed for PlayStation Party Chat, especially the network connectivity feature, because I get NAT-type errors a lot when I'm using Party Chat on PS4. Uh, You're also getting remote play coming to Android devices running Android 5.0 or higher, and players will be able to use their DualShock 4s to play on Android, iPhones, and iPads. The controller will connect via Bluetooth and should work as long as you're running at least Android 10, iOS 13, or iPad OS 13, and Max will get this capability when OS Catalina releases later in October. Um, I also heard that they're dis- disabling Facebook. Yeah, I don't use that feature a lot, but it will be annoying not having it because that was the easiest way to get clips uh, yeah. shared in social media. So I, I saw that too. That is a bit of a bummer. Uh, let me ask you something. How many people... What was the max amount of people in a party that you've ever been in? Uh, six when I was doing a Destiny raid. That's it. <laughs> there is no reason for 16 people to be in a party. I think it depends on how you use party chat. You, you do realize that there are not an insignificant number of people who will be in party chat with folks that they're not even gaming with. Just they're just hanging out in party chat while they're all doing their own things, which I have done before, and that is yeah. a terrible experience to yeah, me. It sucks. <laughs> like, yeah, like I play. I've been playing a game, and someone invites me to their party, and they're playing something different. Right? I get it. Right? Because it's just like hanging out with your buddies or whatever. But no, dude, sixteen people. That that's that's overkill, man. Uh, that's just that's just like. Numbers for numbers sake. I, I, I don't nah chat transcript chat transcription. I mean, I don't know what you would use it for unless, you know, some unless it's easier for people to, um, to like, let's say some asshole is threatening to swat. Mm-hmm. Then, you, but you, then but you, but you wouldn't be in party chat with that person, would you? I mean, I don't know, man. What if, what if, uh, what if, what if, what if you and Nixon have a falling out? (laughs) (laughs) 
We we are we are both way too laid back to ever have such a thing, <laughs> to ever have such a thing uh, escalate to that level. Um, I don't know. Maybe for the hearing impaired, that's a useful feature. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I can't. Uh, I wouldn't have too much use for it either. Uh, this is my for for a for a a full number version update. This is a pretty feature light uh, update that they have here. Yeah. So, but again, that it's also we're six years into the PlayStation life cycle, so I don't really know what all we're expecting as far as new features either. So yeah, this is uh this is the remote play update. That's all this is. Yeah. Like being able to use your being able to use your dual shock um when you're away, like um, you know, if I'm watching the baby or something and we're upstairs, I might be able to bring my dual shock upstairs and play on my iPad, I guess. Mm-hmm. But um even still like, I mean that I makes remote recommend. play somewhat usable. The fact that you right. can use a controller yeah. with it. So. Like I can I can I can actually do things on it now, but um at the same time, like it's not the best way to play. So why would I I could just wait, but I I guess, you know, like you said, we're 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 at the tail end. Mm-hmm. So uh, so a bit of disconcerting news. So we we spoke critically uh, when Assassin's Creed Odyssey came out, uh, and they had the Time Saver uh, XP boost that you could purchase with real money to gain XP to faster clips so that you didn't have to grind as hard for side missions and things of that nature. And uh, like I said, we, we, we bitched about it. We both also bought it in the game because we do value our time, and our time was worth $10, I guess. Yeah. Um, this is maybe taking it a step too far. So in the recent Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which the the responses to have been incredibly polarizing. People are really either really enjoying this game or this is the one of the worst examples of video of a video game uh of all time. So all far. I've been hearing is the latter. Okay. Like everybody hates this game. Well, this might be a big reason why. Apparently, every single item that you can use in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, every gun, every piece of equipment, Every skin, every everything, everything that you can use in Ghost Recon Breakpoint can be purchased with real money <laughs> in game. Now, there's one exception to this, and that is the skill point upgrades to upgrade your character, which used to be able to be purchased with real money until the community outcry was so large that they ca- that they took away that feature. Yeah, like that's that's literally pay to win, right? Like. Like there's <laughs> like Ubisoft, I don't know why Ubisoft seems to be able to they seem to be able to skirt like some of the, the major Well um, the re- the reason why is because all they've done this in is games that are primarily PvE. So like mm-hmm. Ghost Recon, for example, has a player versus player multiplayer mode, but they equalize everyone's statistics. So it doesn't matter how good your character is when you go in there, you're still going to be on the same level. You can't you can't pay to win that mode because of how mm-hmm. the game works. So you you can you can buy an advantage apparently because you can upgrade your weapons to like have greater rate of fire or do more damage or reload speed, stuff like that. But you can't you can't become like a god in that mode with real money. Mm-hmm. And I guess their philosophy as well all the only the only person you're cheating is yourself if you you know just throw money at this game to make it easy to go through so whatever but this isn't right like i i hate to i hate to sound like jim sterling but yo know, like this is fucked up yo know? like what's the <laughs> point of this game then what is the point of this game if not get, like I, like the time saver is one thing like it's it's egregious but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna, you know, bitch about it too much because I've done it. But like the availability to purchase literally everything, like why am I playing this? And, and from what from what I understand, like the gameplay isn't that great. So I'm not gonna uh uh I, wow. Like Ubisoft has Ubisoft has a lot of balls on them, man. Yeah. And and again, all you're doing when you do stuff like this is you're inviting questions on how the progression in the game works by default. Because obviously, you would think that if they're letting you buy, purchase everything with your money, that the progression, the natural progression in the game is probably slowed. Or at least yeah. it invites the perception that it's slowed by comparison. Yeah, yeah it's probably broken. 
but to get you to steer you into, you know, buying the things that you specifically want. Uh, no, nah, this doesn't, this doesn't feel right. This feels gross. Yeah. Like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all for, uh, I, w- I won't say that I'm all for, uh, a bunch of microtransactions, but I understand why they're there and, and I can, I can kind of wrap my head around the fact that, oh, well, these are persistent servers and you need to pay people to, you know, maintain these things. But when you can literally just purchase everything in the game, like that's just, that's just outright greed. Right. And I'm sure there's someone who has too. That's, that's, that's the, that's the more disconcerting part to me is that there is someone that has probably taken advantage of these features and probably spent who knows how many hundreds of dollars you'd have to spend in order to purchase everything. Uh, How much is, how much is everything in Ghost Recon Breakpoint? I don't know. I didn't, I didn't see that reported in the article. Um, that we linked. <laughs> so, who the fuck knows? But yeah, Shay. I yeah, like 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 you said. What's the point of playing the game if this is just gonna be made available to you that you could just purchase everything a la carte? Yeah. At that point, so this is silly. Um, it's taking what was already a questionable strategy in Assassin's Creed and taking it to its more gross, uh, natural conclusion. Uh, so if you don't appreciate that, then, uh, don't support Ghost Recon Breakpoint with your dollars is what I'll say. And credit to Micah, who's been on the fuck Ghost Recon train, uh, from since its inception, basically. Thank you. Like, uh, <laughs> nah, man. Mm-mm. Nope. Can't do it. Can't justify it. Uh, it was announced by Crystal Dynamics that, uh, Kamala Khan is going to be the sixth playable hero in the Marvel Avengers game, she, of course, is Miss Marvel. In the comic books, uh, she apparently features prominently in the story as she gains her powers uh, during the A-Day event um, that you see in the game. So, yeah, apparently she is going to be uh, one of the catalysts to bring the Avengers back together during the story. How? Like, like I we were talking about this briefly before we started. I don't know how they're going to introduce new characters. Like they at E3, they said that the game is set up that they can introduce a bunch of new characters in into this story. And this game is going to be, you know, a, a live service game. Uh, but I, I, I'm very curious, right? Like obviously Kamala Khan has, has been planned out, but I, I don't know. I, I, I think I need to play this game just to just to get a feel of what it is, like because right now it's just a, a bunch of cutscenes, a bunch of cutscenes with especially this trailer. This specific trailer is just a bunch of of story beats, and then the gameplay sections, the gameplay sections, in my opinion, don't look finished. Or if they are finished, and you, you know, you tell me uh, your opinion. Mm-hmm. If they are finished. They look barren and 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 pretty it's sad. Well, it's 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 not gonna be finished yet. I mean, the game is still pre-alpha as we sit here right now. It's not coming out for another seven months. At least uh, I would not I would not be shocked if this gets delayed into the fall, by the way, of next year, which would really be unfortunate for them considering that's when the consoles are launching. But hey, what are you gonna do? Um, like I said, my biggest issue is that. The the gameplay footage that I saw of all the different characters fighting in in the in-game engine, the characters all kind of look the same in terms of their fighting style, in terms of how they approached combat, which should not be that way. Iron Man should not be getting up and punching people in their face doing some CQC combat bullshit like Black Widow. You know what I mean? And and you're gonna see a lot of the same type of stuff. Like now Kamala Khan will fit much better into this universe in that sort of fighting style because of her specific power set. But the, the, this only works if the heroes play very diversely from one. Another. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm still on the fence with this game, man. I, I, I haven't, but, and you know me, I, I am. Give me a reason. Right. To drop 60 bucks. You, on you, you probably I, already pre-ordered cyberpunk and final fantasy seven remake. Right. Like, I, I, all I need is one reason, and I haven't seen one yet. But, hey, 
you know, Kamala Khan's going to be in it. That's cool. Um, you don't see um, Muslim representation in a positive light anywhere, especially in video games and the Call of Duty generation that we're in. So, you know, this is cool. I, I appreciate it on a social level. And it's probably not even all that serious, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's you know, to them, it's just a, a character, right? That they that fits into this specific game type, I guess. But yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. We don't. We, we don't know what your one reason would be. If if, if they well, annou- if they yeah. announced that there was going to be a Fantastic Four DLC and Doctor Doom was going to be the villain, I mean, you'd be you'd be you'd be in so fast. That's half. That's the one hundred percent reason why I bought the season pass for multiple Marvel Ultimate Alliance. <laughs> uh, that's it. So, and then finally, uh, a bit of sad news: Alpha Dream, uh, a twenty-year-old Japanese studio who is best known for the Mario and Luigi RPG series on the DS, uh, seeks bankruptcy protection uh, in Japan. Last week, apparently, the studio has been crippled by high development costs and sluggish sales. Uh, the stu- the story that was reported in uh, Yahoo News and Gamatsu uh, said that the studio had listed debt of 465 million yen, uh, which is roughly 4.3 million dollars U.S. Uh, as of March 2018. Uh, again, if you've ever seen any of the Mario and Luigi games that have come out across the Game Boy Advance, the DS, and the 3DS, uh, you're probably very familiar with Alpha Dream. Uh, not surprised because I know those games didn't have a huge commercial appeal. Um, but it's still sad. You know, you never like to see any game studio uh, closing up shop. So. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks, man. Um, I hope those people, uh, I wish nothing but the best for those people. Been out of a job before, uh, and it is not fun. So hope those people land on their feet. That's it. Have you ever uh, have you ever played the Mario and Luigi RPG games? I've, for some reason, it never... It, it it never hit with me. Like, I, I, I didn't, it didn't hit with me either. I played uh, – the only one that I've ever played was Superstar Saga, which came out on the Game Boy Advance. And uh, mm-hmm. I played very little of it because, like you said, it just never never connected with me in the same way. In fact, it felt it, – it was, it, was like, it was like easy mode for RPGs basically. And the gameplay yeah. and story wasn't compelling enough to keep me playing despite the lack of challenge. So, Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, look, people, we know you shop. There. Everyone does. We need you to go to densepixels.com slash Amazon for all your shopping needs. I do it. Brad does it. Everybody does it. It's like drugs. It's cool, and everybody does it. <laughs> <laughs> go to www.densepixels.com slash Amazon for all your Amazon purchases. Um, don't pick the super saver shipping. Like the reason you go to Amazon is because the reason you have one click buy is because it's one less step because you're impatient, just like me, and you want your stuff as soon as possible. Pay for the extra ship. <laughs> oh, no, I won't say that because I don't think that goes to our, I don't think that helps us get the two day shipping. If you got prime, which you probably do is free. Get the two day shipping. Make that make that lazy old man get up off his ass and hoof it. Make him run a mile so that you can get your stuff on time. It's all about you. You're the consumer. The customer's always right, except when you come into my store. www.denpistol.com slash Amazon. <laughs> that would be totally unexpected direction. <laughs> Speaking of fucking things coming out of left field, holy shit, Destiny 2 Shadowkeep, the newest expansion uh, for Destiny 2, dropped this past week. Uh, I've played about 10 hours or so, I'd say. Uh, I don't know how much you've gotten to experience yet of the game. Um, I uh, I can tell you what mission I just finished. Um, uh, the Lectern of Enhancement. Oh. And... Um, and now, um, uh, Akora, uh, the next mission is an important message. Akora has arrived on the moon to see something, 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 and, uh, take the portal near so-and-so and meet her 
and that's where I'm at right now. Okay. I haven't I haven't spoken to her yet. You're actually further in the Shadowkeep storyline than I am. I've actually not done the Hellmouth mission uh, yet. That's that's where I left off. Because I've been doing so much other stuff, Micah. Holy shit. There's <laughs> there there's great activities to do. Um, so we're gonna touch on some mild spoilers in this. Uh there's spoilers that you would see in the first mission of Shadow Keep, but they are major destiny plot spoilers, like not just for Shadow Keep, but for the Destiny franchise as a whole. Um, so mm-hmm. if that is something that you are sensitive to, if you plan on getting this expansion down the road. Uh, and don't want to hear about the spoilers, maybe skip ahead. I'd say five minutes to be safe because we're not going to talk about the story too, too long. Um, but I'll give you one second to to, to make that adjustment. Um, all right. So let me tell you something. As someone who is into the Destiny lore, mm-hmm. when you are walking into that cavern and you turn that corner, where, by the way, Bungie disables your sprint feature. I, I was walking anyway, so I didn't know it, but apparently they turn off your sprint when you're turning <laughs> when you're turning into this corner because they want you to see what it is you see. And you round that corner and one of the fucking pyramid ships is sitting there. I was like, oh my god! Like I was like screaming like in in into no one in particular in front of me that that was that that is what you came across that's such a huge it, and again if you don't if you're not into destiny if you haven't been playing the game you might not understand how big of a fucking moment that, that is to to see these things that have been just heard of and not really seen maybe only seen for two seconds at the end of the destiny 2 uh post credit stinger basically yeah. when you beat the game um to see one of these things in person the the truest representation of the darkness and to realize that they that that has it's been on the moon the whole time like like it didn't just get there it's been there so like it it frames the everything that happened on the moon not only in this game but also in destiny 1 everything yeah. that you went through on the moon everything you went through with crota it frames that all those interactions in a different context as well so that was amazing that was amazing and and the whole point of the expansion is you're trying to get you're trying to infiltrate the pyramid, Michael. We're gonna get to go to the pyramid. <laughs> what could be inside? Who knows? Um, so that was awesome. Let me. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm not as much into the lore of Destiny as you are, but um, I do like the Hive as villains. And um, yeah, this is like they make the Hive really scary, man. Like. Like a lot of these missions are just dark and they do a lot of, they've, they've really come a long way with their presentation, mm-hmm. uh, in their storytelling. Um, and, and the moments that they want to invoke, they do a very good job, especially for it being a video game, like with, with, with. Um, cinematography and stuff like that because it's very difficult because with a video game, you know, oh, I'm looking at everything. Whoa, whoa. But no, they, they do a very good job of drawing your, your, your eye to the thing they want you to look at. And they do a very good job of making things feel epic or, or not, just conveying the mood that they want. And there's one section in here where, where it's like, I got to grab this key. And the key is right there in front of my face, sitting on a pedestal. There's a light there. And I'm like, and the and ghost is like, there's the key. Now let's get it. I th- and then and then leave, right? And and of course it's like, all right, well, I've seen this before. So you go up and it's it's uh, it's, literally, course, it's literally Rage of the Lost Ark. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and you know, you can't get it. And then there's this fight and then you, you get it and you're supposed to leave and you're like, and someone is trying, uh, someone is supposed to get you out of there. And it's like, Hey, where are you at? Why aren't you saying anything? And all of a sudden enemies are coming and this music swells. And, and it's like, goats is like, yo, we got to run out of here. Like we can't rely on this person right now. We got to get the hell out of here. And it's tense, man. And it's, it's exhilarating. And this is, this is really good, man. Like, like, don't sleep on on Destiny's lore and storytelling. Like, if you get into it, like it's they do a very very good job. Yeah, it's 
like I said, that 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 one moment just up front. I and I'm I'm looking and I've heard that this that the story for this expansion does end rather abruptly. Um and that there's a reason for that is because so basically the story ends from what I understand where the Black Garden raid that just released um this past weekend begins. And then the Black Garden has launched these Vex invasions that are on the moon. And then once you deal with the Vex invasions, you can go do the Vents offensives in the Black Garden, which is the new, like, big activity for this season, um, which I got to do for the first time today. And it's it's similar to the Menagerie or just, like, an extended version of a strike in terms of what you're doing. You do have some more mechanics that you might not find in a strike, like that you have some, you know, very, very light raid-esque mechanics that are mm-hmm. in this. And then... That'll lead to the dungeon that they're releasing at the end of the month, uh, with in the season of the undying. So basically, they're they're having these events that are all interconnected, and then something that happens at the end of this season of the undying will lead into how the story progresses in the next season that they're doing. And so, like now, I think they have a little bit more freedom to kind of freewheel a little bit and kind of do what they want to do. And yeah. and and part of that is the story, and and this is a great start. Um, from where they are. And again, you're going back to a familiar destination. Um, it's, you know, e- even just going into the Temple of Crota is still incredibly, like, unnerving for me. Because it always <laughs> was uh, in, in the original Destiny as well. So, kudos there. Uh, great job. Um, as far as the other stuff that you like, said, we talked about Vex Offensive. I did one earlier today. Um, it, was a, it was a pretty good amount of fun. Have you done these yet, Mike? Because they just unlocked with the unlocking of the raid this weekend. I haven't done. Is that the one where you pick it straight from the map, or is that the one where the vex just pop up? So the one, the ones oh, where vex way. pops up, those are vex invasions. Those are kind of like public events in a way. Yeah. Um. The vex offensive, you have to do a couple of the invasions first before you can get access to the offensive. But that's the one where you you pick it from the map. Okay, I haven't done that yet. I don't have access to that yet. Okay. Yeah, you have to visit Ikora oh. first to get a quest, and then you have to kill a bunch of vex, and then then you get to do it basically. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to do that when we get off because I enjoy, I enjoy those. Is it like, uh, the thing that was on Mars and, um, it's, and, it's um, much closer to the menagerie, I would say, because, okay. because basically like it, it alternates between these, like you have to clear out Vex basically, and then oracles pop up. So you have to get the Vex heads that shoot the beams to kill those. And then once you do that a couple times, then there's a big, a gate Lord that you have to fight. But the Gate Lord has an unbreakable shield. Well, how do you break the shield? You have to use the fucking the Vex heads, and then you have to kill specific vets to get those and use that to drop his shields. But it's a six player match made activity, so it's it's still pretty fun to do. It's much more similar to Menagerie, and you get a similar amount of loot for the Menagerie. Like running the Vex offensive once today, I got mm-hmm. like four legendary drops, and all four of them were new the new weapons that are part of this new season of the Undying. So it's not a public event, and and but it does have matchmaking. Yes, yeah, you can go in by yourself, and you'll get matched with other players. And you guys have you can... done it? Have you done it with randos, or have you yeah. done it with people you know? No, the one time I did it was with randos, and it was fine. Okay, so all right, I so there's a like I haven't been in Destiny in a in in a while, mm. right? Like like first thing I did was hop into Gambit, right? Because I I enjoy like I didn't even do Gambit Prime the last time. I, I was um I, I I didn't do it. I I did regular gambit this time, and I didn't even know that if there's a one to one tie. Oh yeah, round three is just into... boss just boss fight basically. Yeah. Oh thank God, <laughs> uh, because gambit gambit can be very very long. Um, I I I correct me if I'm wrong. You can do nightfalls. Um. Match made nightfall only now? only the only the ordeal nightfall. That's the only one that you can do, which is a rotating nightfall um, that you can play in multiple difficulties. Like if you do the nightfall playlist, that still is no matchmaking. But the ordeal nightfall and, and you can only do the ordeal at the two lower power levels. So you can do it at 750 and you could do it. I think it was at 820 is the other power level. Okay. Um, but if you do the 920 or 980 version um, that you can't you have to have a fire team to go into that one. Okay, but yeah, they All made right. they made match made nightfalls for the first time ever, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, <laughs> which is fantastic. Um, so, uh, I played a couple of strikes. It felt so it felt so 
good to play a strike that I've never seen before. Uh, I can't remember. I played a couple. I can't remember what they were. Um, uh, I played one of the new ones for the story, Mm -hmm. um, which was very fun. Um, Yeah. And Destiny, it it took a minute for the muscle memory to come back, you know, because I, I forgot that melee was was a trigger button. (laughs) <laughs> uh, or shoulder yeah, uh, let me tell you. Coming, coming, coming from Borderlands Three, the first, the first day that I was playing Shadowkeep, I felt like I was running through mud because of the frame rate being locked at thirty instead of pushing sixty. And just Destiny is just a slower playing game than Borderlands is. Like everything is just a shade slower. Your movement speeds a little bit slower. Your reloads are a little bit slower. <laughs> like it just, it just is not quite as smooth uh, as Borderlands is. Do you have um did you get the um the season pass or whatever oh, it is? Oh of course. Well, so if you bought if you buy Shadow Keep, if you just buy the $35 Shadow Keep expansion, uh you do get Season of the Undying as part of that. That is the first season in this new year of Destiny. If you buy the Deluxe Shadow Keep, uh that also includes the annual pass which gets you all four seasons uh that are going to happen over this next 12 months. I of course bought the Deluxe version cuz I know I'm going to buy all the seasons, so you might as well save five dollars. I I did as well. So you have Ariana's vow. Mm-hmm. I do. Holy shit, man! Yeah. Like, is that like, like I was talking to a friend of mine. He was like, "Did you did you get that hand cannon sniper rifle?" And I'm like, "Oh, that's why that thing is so powerful." Yeah. Because I'm like, yo, I know you they can, didn't just if just, you uh, if uh, you run a warlock and you run empowering rift in crucible, you can one bomb people with that gun. <laughs> <laughs> yo, <come on. laughs> <laughs> that thing is amazing. Like, and I'm not, I'm not a short shot, right? Like I'm not good with hand cannons, mm-hmm. but yo, that thing, I, I just wanted to, I, I wanted to, uh, uh, Get into hand cannons because I was like, "Yo, this can't be all hand cannons. All hand cannons can't." No, be no, this, all. this, this is the only like range <laughs> hand cannon that uh that's in the game right now. I'm sure there'll Jesus be more later though. Christ. Um, that's the other thing too. Exotic catalysts have been like raining from the sky. I've got, I've, I've earned like three new catalysts just since Shadowkeep started. Jesus, which is which is incredible, including for Ace of Spades, which I'm happy to have. So <laughs> even though the catalyst is apparently junk, um. I haven't do- dove into the Armor 2.0 season or into the Armor 2.0 feature yet because I just got my Hunter um, to 900 power, so I Jeez. didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't worried about any mods or anything like that in the in the lead up to 900. Um, so now that I'm there, I might start fiddling with Armor 2.0 a little bit as well. Um, but ha- just having the seasonal artifact that's a new feature as well. Is once you get, have you gotten the artifact yet? Yes, I have. Uh, I have the artifact. Okay. So yeah, just what a cool feature too. Like giving your XP something much more tangible to go to lets you unlock unique mods that are unique to that season only. Like those mods, like you don't have those mods when the season's over; they're just going to go away. But you need them for some of the things that happen, and some of the mods have made like really disgusting builds as well. Because apparently, like, when you get to that last column, there are these, like, arc reactor mods that when you do your class ability, um, it gives you – what does it do? I think it gives you an overshield when you do when, – whenever you perform your class ability. So imagine pairing that with, like, the worm husk crown as a hunter that lets you regen your health when you use your class ability. So, <laughs> like, like stuff like, like, like being able to do shit like that is fucking amazing. So that's been really cool. Like I said, haven't dove too deep into that so far. Um, the Eververse has interestingly pretty much just become a a money store at this point. You don't get bright engrams or whatever they want to call them this season anymore. You get one at the beginning of the season. Maybe it's it might be once a week actually because we we're, we haven't gotten to a new week yet in Destiny Two. Uh, but you don't earn them when you level up like you used to before. So now it really is like the cosmetic stuff mm-hmm. is just either bright dust if you if you happen to have it because bright dust is not earned very quickly. Uh, in this new expansion, or right. you could just pay, you can just buy silver and buy it. What do yeah. you think about that? Um, I mean, look, uh, it, they they drop the pretense, which all right, that's fine. Um, there's no reason to go there now if you if you don't uh, specifically want something. Like I I actually appreciate that a bit because if you get if you if they drop you know engrams every time you leveled up. 
then you would that would be a reason to go to Eververse, and that would be another reason to be like, oh, hey, maybe you want to buy this. You know what I mean? But uh, I'm I'm actually kind of glad. I I like the way the store is laid out. Um, and yeah, it it is what it is. I'm not buying like finishers and stuff like that, oh, especially Lord, now no. that you can earn them. <laughs> Did you see how much that pack of finishers cost? That's in there, by the way. It's something like twenty dollars yeah, for a pack like? of three. Yeah, you better get out of here. Yeah, man. fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually, I, I, I like the finishers. Like, I don't think to use them half the time, but apparently the finishers get good when you get mods that benefit you from using them. Apparently like okay. there, like there's mods that you can get. Like when you perform a finisher, you lose like 10% of your super, but you get a guaranteed heavy brick that drops like that kind of thing. Okay. So, or like there's one that like, I think like if you do your finisher, like all your weapons reload, which is pretty nice as well, <laughs> as far as the no. feature goes. Now, someone told me, I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know this for certain because I haven't done too much Crucible. But uh, can you not do finishers in Crucible? No, no, you can't. You can't do finishers, Southern Guardians. Could you imagine? Yo, why would you? Like, why would you want to though? Why would you want to? Uh, to show off. Yeah, but that would just leave you open to get shot by his team by the dude's teammate. Hey, hey, hey! If 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 you're running lone wolf. That that's that's your penance. Don't run <laughs> lone wolf anymore. No, nobody would use those if it was if it was in Crucible. I, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with it. But uh, I'm glad you brought it up. Um, the changes to Crucible so far have been excellent. So in in the in the what was formerly known as Quick Play. So now they either have you they have a specific Clash playlist, they have a specific Control playlist, or you can go with what's called Classic Mix which rotates between Clash Control and Supremacy. Um, it's 6v6 still. They brought back the Destiny 1 uh, thing where you can, act, you can share heavy. So, like, if your teammate picks heavy, like, it's available for you to pick a lesser heavy brick as well for a couple seconds afterwards. So multiple mm -hmm. people on the team can get heavy at a time, which is fucking nice instead of heavy being, like, the thing that swings the match. Yeah. Constantly. And it comes up more frequently, too. That's the other, that's the other big benefit as well. Uh, holy shit, comp. Holy shit, comp is fucking, I don't know what to say, Micah. 3v3 oh. survival only. 3v3 survival only. No <laughs> more countdown. No more fours, because that was always awkward when you played some comp with four people, but then you wanted to stop and go run a strike, and then somebody had to leave, and that was always awkward. No, 3v3, and <laughs> the greatest thing that we asked for it for a year and a half, Micah, a solo queue comp playlist yeah my buddy he uh i was playing with him yesterday and he was he was going crazy for it he was like yo this is amazing um he said that it can that you get you get points based on how you do not yeah, necessarily yeah like that that's the thing is that they will so like apparently this new system is like minute to minute evaluating your gameplay so if you have like a comp game where you just go off, right? Like you just go off. You have like a you know five point KD, and you have like twenty five kills or thirty kills, and you know you you you, you fucking rock it out, and you crush the other team. They're gonna just give you like five hundred fucking rank points in comp <laughs> because the, because the the whole point of this of this system, which kind of evaluates you in real time, is to get the top tier players into the top tier faster, so that the Regular tier players like me don't have to deal with them on on the way up the ladder, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. um, which is going to be nice. And it also takes care of the other big problem that Comp had for the past several seasons is the amount of account recoveries that people run. Because now you don't have to worry about, like, like when you get near that fabled rank, running into the fucking the funnel of account recoveries of people that are way better than the accounts that they're playing on that you're yeah. going up against. Because those people are also going to be in the legend tier ranking and then sucks to be that person uh, who, who paid for that account recovery when they get their account back, because then they're going to be playing with the fucking, the, the sweats and they're not going to be able to do shit, <laughs> which will, which will bring me great joy. I will tell you. So yeah, so far the changes to PVP uh, have been very welcome and very excellent. And uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else with this expansion that we haven't talked about yet. I will I will say this. So Terrence Terrence picked it up for the first time the other day. That's that's the strength of the new destiny, by the way, is it got Terrence <laughs> back into it. And he said that he didn't know what the fuck he was what what the fuck he should be doing. 
And I will say that that even, even for me, someone who had been playing as recently as like a month and a half ago, it still took me a couple seconds to figure out exactly what I should do. Yeah. You, that this game is, is, um, it paralyzes you with, with choices, Mm -hmm. right? I haven't played in a long time. So I go in and I check out the new layout and the, the quest section is, is in the director now. And, and, um, I have a ton of quests and I'm like, yo, what? Huh? Well, you, you have a lot of quests from, I can't remember which season. I think it was the gambit season where they had these like destination quests that you could do to, for, yeah. and it was there for new players to be like, Hey, you're new to the game here. You can go to destination vendors and do stuff with them and you can go here and do this. Like, so I think that's what those are for you. Cause I didn't have those. Cause I'm pretty sure that I got them, you know, six months ago when yeah. they first dropped. But even like they've even simplified it. Right. So like, you remember the weekly milestones that used to have the challenges, you know how mm-hmm. you don't see them on the map right now. It's yeah. because you don't even see those until you're 900 power because they're like, we're not even going to show you powerful gear activities until getting it is worth your time. So like, huh. so like you'll see those once you get to 900, but you don't see them beforehand. And I think that's cool. You don't get prime engrams until you, re- until you reach 900 power level, which yeah. is also smart. But even so, it doesn't really give you strong direction on where you should go and what you should be doing. And I almost wonder, I'm thinking about deleting one of my alt characters mm-hmm. and actually experiencing the new light story beginning. And mm-hmm. seeing if that maybe gives that – first of all, I want to check. I just want to see it again because, like I said, I'd, I'd love to relive that uh, that first part of Destiny 1 again. But I'm yeah. also curious to see if it kind of eases you into the game a little bit better and if that's almost the preferred way that you should access Shadowkeep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is uh, I don't think it's available now. Is Cross uh, cross Save available now? Cross Save is, yes. Cross Save has been for about a month and a half now. Okay. Now you have okay. to go, you have to actually go to the, to bungee.net to enable it. And for you, it's going to be for you. You got to make sure that you're doing exactly the steps correctly. Cause you don't want to accidentally enable it on the wrong set of characters. Yeah. No you know kid. what I mean? So, so like you have to actually go to bungee.net to enable cross save, but yeah, you can absolutely do uh cross save now. So now, yeah, you could take your PlayStation characters uh, over to Xbox if you wanted to, if you have friends on there that you want to play with. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. So I'm not curious enough to risk fucking it up. Well, I don't, I don't think you can fuck it up. It's just that you have to just make sure that you are doing it right. Yeah. So, but yeah, so that's in there now. Um, it, it, it's, it's a great first week. I'm looking forward to playing more of it uh, as we go along. And I, I have to do those nightfall ordeals. That's the one thing I have not done yet because I forgot they were there. So, so I should probably, <laughs> I should probably get on that. Uh, it'll be a good time. So that is shadow keep. Uh, we move on to the dense pixels post office, uh, where we ask you guys to submit questions to the show and, uh, we will answer them as best we can. Uh, um, I'll read these. Yeah, go for it. Uh, Andy says, uh, with PlayStation inarguably winning this round of console wars, who do you think is currently, in second, the X-Bone or the Switch? Now, I would say the same thing that we've always said um, when it comes to Nintendo. Nintendo's not playing the same game as everybody else is. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, as much as as much as people like to, you know, think that this is like a three-way dance, Nintendo is always off doing their own thing. Like, they don't, they don't even try to compete with with Microsoft or Sony. Um I think at one point they even kind of acknowledged it. Like, no, nah, we're just, you know, we got our fans and we're trying to please them. I mean I mean for Christ's sake, I don't even know if Xbox is competing with Sony right now <laughs> at, this, <laughs> at this point with some of the decisions they've made late in the uh in this console generation. So yeah. Uh Xbox One by default. Um, Warren says, when is Brad going to beat God of War so we can get some spoiler talk? Have you ever finished that? No, I never did. And I'm probably never going to, honestly. Oh, I know you're never going to yeah. now. Like it's, it's, it's way too late. Yeah. Um, I've read some of the, some of the spoilers for the game. Like, I, like I'm aware of who Kratos's son is and I'm aware of 
the true identities of certain characters that you met innocuously throughout yeah. the game. Um, so we can we can have God of War spoiler talk. Uh, maybe not in this episode. Uh, maybe on a future episode. Maybe maybe when Terrence's internet uh, gets right and he could be on because I know he beat the game. So. Yeah. We can we can talk out of war spoilers. That doesn't uh, offend me. The game, my my rule is if a game's been out for like more than eighteen months, and then that's perfectly past the uh, statute of limitations. On, uh, yeah, on when uh, talk. when when the manufacturer decides to lower the manufacturer's suggested retail price, <laughs> I think it's pretty safe to talk spoilers. Yeah, uh, Gaston says, "Do you guys have a game or console?" You completely railed against only to play it and really enjoy it. If so. What was it? Leonardo jumps in and says, probably Brad with the switch and soon Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, probably wrong <laughs> on both the accounts. So the switch maybe, but so this, but the switch was us speculating as to what the console was going to be based on the information that we had. And we were far from being alone in that speculation. So until, until it's actually available, I don't know if I count that. You know what I mean? Like, if for some reason I found the Wii U to be completely charming, then that might be acceptable because we shit on that console like crazy. Yeah, um, I don't because if I rail against the console, I'm probably not going to buy it. (laughs) So, um, like, I know I got a problem, but I I don't have that much of a problem where I'm going to buy something that I think I'm not going to like. I'm trying Um, to think if there's anything that I really... That I really came out strong against that uh that I end up that I end up liking at the end of the day. But like you said, like, like if you hate games. It, right, if you hate it that much, you're probably not gonna even give it a shot to be able to say yeah. that it's uh yeah. that it's that it's actually good. Terrence is the type of person that will be obstinate f- for no damn reason, only to come <laughs> back and buy some and buy something and be like, oh, or, or play something and be like, oh, all right, this was pretty good. Actually, you know like, what? Destiny might be that game. Like the first Destiny, it was I wasn't like vehemently against it. Um, I had more apathy towards it because I played the alpha and it didn't do anything for me. Um, yeah, you really didn't get into Destiny one, did you? Not until Rise of Iron came out. Because, and I also remember you guys like. Every week, kind of talking about like, nah, you really don't need to. Like, ah, it's not that great. Like, ah, like, and for a while there, it was, uh, it was not really. You guys weren't really hyping it up, so I was like, okay, this is fine. I don't need to. I don't need to worry about this game. And then I, what was it about Rise of Iron? I think that when uh, I think that it was just the lead up to it. Like that was one of the <laughs> weirdly enough that was one of those uh, games or expansions rather where the marketing really worked on me. Um, yeah. it looked really cool. Like the trailer that they had for rise of iron looked neat. And I was like, wow, there's a lot of crazy shit going on in destiny. Maybe I should give it another shot. And I sat cause I owned the game. Like, cause I got it for free. Um, but I just never sat down and played it. So I remember when rise of iron was coming out. Um, I think I downloaded the game, the, like the, when, when was it probably like a month or two before and started playing, uh, start playing through the regular destiny content and got really mm-hmm. into it. So Maybe that's the one. Um, if it is going to happen, it'll be with No Man's Sky. <laughs> <laughs> and and until someone uh, gifts me that game, I'm not going to play it. Part of me one. Uh, part of me might do it just to get you to play it, just to see, <laughs> just to see if that uh, if that turns you <laughs> or not. Now Anthony that now says, that I know now that I know you'll play it as long as you don't have to pay for it. Uh, yeah, well, now that it, now one, now that it's a game, <laughs> <laughs> I will play it if I don't have to pay for it. I can't pay for it now because I've, I've, this is me being Terrence. Like, nope, I said, I said it and that's it. <laughs> Foot down. Anthony says, what's the next big game release uh, you are excited for? And then links uh, um, uh, to some upcoming uh, release dates. Um I, you know, I'm still a little excited about the outer worlds. Uh, I'm not like losing sleep over it. Um, I'm not losing sleep over Jedi fallen order. I, I am getting it, but I'm not, I'm not like, yo, I gotta play this. Uh, I'm getting it cause I need a game to play in November. Um, Pokemon, I'm getting Pokemon. I'm getting need for speed. Um, I don't think there's anything else that's like, that's like got me super excited until cyberpunk. Oh, for me, for me, it's death stranding. 
that's 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 the next game that I'm super excited for. <laughs> no, I'm absolutely fucking kidding. Um, it's for, it, so it's for me. It's probably a Cyberpunk 2077. Um, I refuse to say that I'm getting excited for Final Fantasy VII remake because I will never be excited for Final Fantasy VII remake. I will be. I will look on it with optimistic curiosity, but I will not say that I'm excited for it. I could be made to be excited uh, for Watch Dogs Legion, depending on how uh, how the how the the marketing rolls out for that game. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm all in for Watch Dogs, no matter what. Um, you know, I just don't know when it's coming out, but uh, I'm sure when it comes out, I'll be able to buy everything in it and then not have to play it. Because you be oh you be soft. Uh, Amir says, when Stadia flops, do they team up with either Sony, Microsoft, or do they just throw that tech away? I feel like it'll be Sony since Microsoft already has their X Cloud. I mean, Sony um, already has Gaikai or whatever you know, whatever streaming service they're using as well. It's not like that they're playing with an empty deck. Um, yeah, that's all for presumptions to think Stadia will flop. I don't think it's going to be a mega success, but I don't think it's going to flop either. Um, you don't think it's going to be a mega success, but like, like we all agree it's going to work, right? right? It's going to work, but will people gravitate towards it? Like Google glass worked, but Google Glass was never meant to be like no matter how much people think it was, Google Glass was never meant to be, or or at least it wasn't geared to be a consumer facing product. Hmm. Like it was more, it was more of a not an IT product, but like a like almost like a development platform of sorts. Um, and that's kind of Google's way too, by the way. Like if this doesn't work, they'll keep the tech, they'll stop the service, and then they'll just license it out to other people that want to yeah. use it. Um. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't think it's going to flop, and I also don't think it's going to become like the industry standard um, within six months. Johnny says, which developers or publishers lost their so-called crown in certain genres, such as fighters, Capcom, uh, shooters, etc., and who stepped up? I mean, the easy answer is Capcom with Street Fighter V, right? Yeah, you like, know, the, e- the even easier example is, uh, is, is Bioware when it comes to story-driven RPGs. Yeah. Uh, God damn. Um, but who stepped up? What developer kind of came out and said, you know what? We're going to out Bioware, Bioware. What, as far as character driven role playing games go? Sure. You don't think CD Projekt Red probably has that crown right now? Yeah. Yeah. You're probably right. And they've been doing that for a while. Mm -hmm. Like The Witcher's been around for a very long time. It's just that. You know, nobody outside of the master race gave a damn <laughs> until they put it on console. And now look at it. Now it's flourishing because, you know, fuck the master race. Um, in terms of other uh, genres, I mean, sh- you know, shooters aren't exactly. um uh, no one's exactly like leading the charge with innovation in first person shooters, right? I Outside mean, you of could, like maybe VR. You could make the argument for shooters that uh that Bungie kind of used to be the gold standard and then that got snatched by Infinity Ward later on. Like that's an argument that you can make. Cuz there was a, there was a good like 6 year period before Modern Warfare came out where Halo was pretty much universally praised as the best at least console FPS. That's out there. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I I see those two as just, you know, two sides of the same coin. One just moves at a more methodical pace, and the other <laughs> one is a goddamn shooting gallery. So um I guess I guess what about like looter shooters? Do you think Destiny has do you think Destiny with with Borderlands 2 being so far away and then having a couple of lackluster pre-sequels and all that. Mm-hmm. Do you think it has gone down and then Bungie has kind of stepped up the game when it comes to live service looter shooters or looter shooters by making it live service? And then do you think Borderlands is like, no, 
we are the original. That's like, that's how they were marketing it. We are the original looter shooter. This is how you do it. Well, you know, it's funny. I don't even, I don't even consider them to be playing in the same, the same ballpark, basically. Like I, I liken Borderlands more to Diablo three than I do destiny. Like, and, and and for some reason, like all the live service shooters, um, to me kind of exist on their own. Like it's, it's really difficult to compare like destiny and the division, for example, because those games are so wildly different from one another. Um, and, and, and almost with those games, it's, it's almost like you got to kind of be part of the club to really understand it. Like the people that really love destiny, the vast majority of those people are people that have loved destiny for multiple years now at this Mm -hmm. point. And they're not going to change. It's not, you're not going to pull in a whole lot of diehards, uh, even with this new light, um, free to play version. I don't think like you might get several, you know, maybe even like a hundred, 200,000 more, you know, consistent players that are, that come back month after month for you, but it's not going to be a ton. I don't think. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. Right. And so like Borderlands, just the, the loop of Borderlands is much more similar to me than Diablo. And even some of the gameplay modes in Borderlands are more akin to something you'd find in a Diablo than you'd find in a destiny. So, uh, Gustavo says, what are the chances of a soul food or barbecue simulator coming out soon uh, when black people start developing video games? <laughs> I was about to say, there's not enough black people in video games, and you also wouldn't <laughs> want a uh, soul food simulator not developed by a black person, or, or, that, or, at least, or at least not without a lot of creative input, much as you yeah. probably don't want soul food being cooked by someone who is not black. Yeah, you don't want uh, you don't want raisins in the potato salad. Like that, <laughs> that game over. If you put raisins in your potato salad, <laughs> games are just self destruct. Uh, John says, pro wrestling related. For a positive, I'm actually excited about the future of wrestling as a whole. For the negative, Kofi lost in nine damn seconds, and we once again continue with inconclusive uh, finishers. Uh, in main event cell matches for at least the second year in a row. Care to discuss? Uh, I have many thoughts about this question. Uh, First, let's start with the fact that I totally forgot that uh, Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns ended in a fuck finish when Brock Lesnar came down and ripped the door off hell in a cell last year. Um, (laughs) Completely forgot that that happened. So that lets you know how this hell in a cell finish will be remembered for years to come. You probably won't even remember it. A year from now, to be quite frank. Um, so that's number one. Number two, uh, as it relates to specifically to the Helm Cell finish last night. Now, we're going to preface it by saying, was that a poorly executed finish? Yes. Like, like, like the way the end of that match unfolded and everything that came after uh, was not done correctly. However, right. I don't think that they deserved the amount of... And the tenor of the vitriol that came along with that. Because first, because first and foremost, you had like bad week for that to happen, right? Like you didn't, you don't want something like that to happen when the closest thing that's emerged as a legitimate competitor to you for the last 18 years debuts their weekly television show, right? So Mm -hmm. I get that. Um, But by the same time, wrestling fans always are complaining about wanting to see something new and different and stories told in a different way and, and for th- not to be the same old bullshit. And I feel like when you ask WWE to do things like that, you also have to realize that in trying these things and trying to tell a story that is a little bit more nuanced than your typical wrestling story, that it's not always going to stick the landing every single time. And perhaps screaming for refunds in the crowd and screaming to restart the match and, and going online and talking about how it's the worst fucking finish of all time, the worst sell match of all time, maybe reacting to that extreme isn't exactly productive. Like, like WWE doesn't need me to sit there and defend it. But at the same time, like sometimes shit's just not going to work. It happens all the time. I mean, you really want to, you really want them to affect change. Uh, you got to, you got to have no reaction whatsoever right? Uh, because they love, they love pissing you off. <laughs> they love it. They love it. They, you think they're worried about AEW? They're not. You can chant AEW all you want. They're not worried about them because you were there. 
you're there watching this and you're going to be on social media complaining about it, which means more engagement, which means you're talking about them like they ain't worried about it. Um, look, that finish, I, I, I knew Seth Rollins was keeping the title. Right. I knew that he was. I figured he was too, but how they got there, like like ha- yeah, having but- having the fucking referee stoppage, like you could have told the same story by having Seth Rollins pin Bray Wyatt in that situation and then still had still kind of unfolded the rest of the match or the, the post match shenanigans in the same way that you did. I feel like that would have right. been okay. And then the story you could have told is Seth Rollins had to completely like lose himself. He had to lose it. Right. In order to even keep this dude down. Right. So I don't know. Or I mean, there were, there were, there were a number of different ways where you could have, where you could have done this, but having the referee in the hell in the cell match, have the referee say, Seth, you don't want to do this. This isn't you, man. As the as the ring is is blood red from the lighting and the and the cage, like it doesn't. That's what pisses me off. Not the fact that Seth Rollins won. Not the fact that the Fiend, who has been on television twice, has in in matches twice, didn't automatically win this title. That didn't surprise me. The fact that I'm that that they're telling the story in a stupid way mm. is what offends me. Like, but again, they have, they have room to recover from this too, by the way. This was the beginning of this story, not the end of it. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, the, the, and the, the bad thing is, is that I got to hear fucking Seth Rollins give, give a bunch of platitudes in his weird Iowan accent. <laughs> and it, it, it means I got, I got to have him get more mic time. That's the bad thing. But you know the the finish, I'm fine with because I'm I'm assuming I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they have long term story plans coming, and and we get and we get more Bray Wyatt and Fiend interaction, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but uh, it's just how they got there that kind of pissed me off. Kofi losing in nine, right? Seconds. That was the, that was the thing that was more egregious than what happened in Hell in a Cell last night. It's not, it's not even again. It's not even that Kofi lost. Like, you want to have Brock Lesnar be your champion on your brand new flagship show that's on network television? I understand. Like, I right, totally I understand. It. But, man, did Co- Kofi Kingston, they, they made it seem like his whole title reign was an afterthought when you dime him out that way. Just to get him out of the picture so that you can have your big Cain Velasquez debut. Right. Like, not one, not one second of offense. Like... <laughs> all right, yo. All right. It made him look like a like a buffoon, even more like a buffoon, which is amazing because he comes out in in a halter top and rainbow <laughs> gear, right? So Now, I it, wonder I wonder if that was an audible because it did seem like some of the segments in the show probably ran longer. Like it seems like the the um the lumberjack match ran long. It seems like the Rock Becky Lynch thing at the beginning probably ran long because of course the Rock can't you know talk without waiting for the crowd to settle down for forty five seconds before he starts going into yeah. his going in his shit. Um, so that might have been an audible. Like they might have had at least a passable squash planned, but then ran out of time to actually. I do guess. That. Maybe. I mean, I, you could have you could have had him come out with um, with him attempting a trouble in paradise, Brock catching him, and then doing the F five. Like he he literally ran to him and, and jumped, jumped up. right. Yeah, <laughs> and and that and that's the thing is that it's it 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 is a really shitty end to what previously to that was eight months of pretty much perfect storytelling. In terms of Kofi Kingston, like some people weren't too keen on the Randy Orton feud that he just had, but I thought that they did pretty well with that, especially because they could draw back to previous events happening and 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 yeah. rolling from there. Um, so, like I said, that that really pissed me off that that Kofi Kingston was dimed out. Like like he had more offense against Brock Lesnar in the match that they had at the house show pay per view that got broadcast on WWE Network three years ago than he did in this <laughs> match. Yeah. So, 
I mean, it is what it is. Uh, what did you think of SmackDown, by the way? Um, it is so the little bit of extra polish that you get on a show that's being seen by twice your viewing audience was evident. Um, and just in terms of like the way the cameras were and 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 things of that nature. Uh, I really hope they don't lean on this. Like, I'm I'm hoping that a lot of that like celebrity fanfare and stuff like that was due to it being the first episode. Um, oh, I don't, I, I don't need that every week. Yeah. Um, I don't need uh, Tyson Fury is that gentleman's name. Who's the lineal, which I still don't know what the fuck that means. Uh, lineal <laughs> boxing champion. Uh, I don't like, he's going to have a program with Braun Strowman. Uh, Braun Strowman's going to get dimed out to him probably. Cause that's what they do when they bring in celebrities. Um, I will say this about Cain Velasquez. At least he's been wrestling in other uh, organizations, yeah. so he should not be a train wreck when he uh, when he fights Brock Lesnar at the Saudi Blood Money show. Yeah. All right. Uh, um, yeah, I I I enjoyed SmackDown. I thought it was good. Uh, I'm wondering how they're going to keep that up because that felt to me like this is 100. percent Let's fucking let's let's. Let's go for the gusto. Let's 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 knock it out. Let's fire on all cylinders. And they went Los Angeles. Like what what happens when they go to you know Davenport? You know <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, well, I mean they'll keep it going for the next week because they had the draft uh, happening over the next week and a half. So yeah, yeah. So um, we'll see. And uh, you didn't watch any AD, AEW, did you? No, I recorded it, but I haven't. I, I didn't hear enough buzz from the show to make me go back and actually. Go back and actually watch it. I just have a like like certain things that I heard that I hear about that they're doing. I just have a general distaste for nowadays. Mm-hmm. Like when I hear about John Moxley, like DDT and Kenny Omega through a glass table, I'm just like it's probably a gimmick table, but still, I mean, like that's that feels like that that feels like product of a bygone era. To me, it almost. feels like it feels like WCW, right? <laughs> it really does. It feels like it not just because it's on TNT and not just because they have Tony Schiavone and. And, and, but it, 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 you know, the black ring, the black robes, it's on TNT, Tony Schiavone, the, the weird, like haze that's in the building. Like it feels <laughs> like WCW. Well, but, and, um, and again, like, like the other not thing, bad. the other thing that bothers me, and this is not AEW's fault. This is more uh, my conflict with modern day wrestling fans nowadays. I'm going to need you to stop freaking out with excitement about people that you couldn't give two shits about if, if you fell on them when they were in WWE. You're telling me you care about Jack Swagger now that he's in fucking AEW? Really? <laughs> You're going to be excited because fucking Jack Swagger showed up on AEW? That was the big way that they closed the show is by Jack Swagger. And you're like, oh my God, Jack Swagger. Like, you couldn't give a shit about that dude when he was in WWE. <laughs> you didn't give two shits. You you bitched and moaned when he won the, when the, when he won the world title. <laughs> but now you care because he was an AEW because he because he's not in WWE anymore and he wrestled in two MMA matches. So now now he's way more credible and we care about him much more than we did. Uh, Whatever. Well, yeah, hey man, wrestling fans gonna wrestle fan. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Um, like I say, it's one thing for John, for you to care about John Moxley because he was a he was a, a made dude in WWE. Yeah, like, that's he, was, he was a world champion. Well, I guess technically Jack Swagger was a world champion also, but yeah. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, he was, but was he? <laughs> um, Leonardo says he couldn't think of a way to insert uh, Jedi Fallen Order into a question this week, so he posts a meme, um, a Star Wars meme that uh, I will not, that I do not know, but I will know. Once, uh, once the Clone Wars, uh, TV show comes on Disney plus and, uh, Ricky says, uh, shadow keep thoughts. How did you guys like the campaign? Uh, did you not, uh, I did not expect it to go the way it did with the redacted showing up as soon as, as so soon in our main story. Uh, what did you make of the final video at the end of the campaign? Favorite moon weapon so far for me is the Archlogic auto rifle, which I will have to uh, look up because I that's that's my weapon. Yeah, I uh, I actually haven't got any of the moon weapons yet. All I have so far uh, is just the Black Garden weapons. Um, um, 
we uh we spoke about it um and we haven't finished the campaign yet so can't talk about it but um i'm enjoying it it's nice to be back into destiny like you forget how or maybe you don't but i forget how how good destiny is uh until i take these long breaks and then i'm like oh yeah like i really like this game this game this game has some serious polish to it and i see why it's still i see why it's still here i will ask you this um and we'll wrap it up on this question, Destiny related. So it sure seems like that this is going to be the way of Destiny. Like I, I'm honestly not sure if we will see another numbered iteration of Destiny again. Like this might become a World of Warcraft situation where Destiny Two is the platform, and mm-hmm. it's just iterated on. What would you think about that, or do you think that we need to see a Destiny Three eventually? Um, do. You- how much life do you think we have left in these console generations? Uh, there's no reason you can't keep it going in the next console generation. I don't think. I guess. I guess. I would not mind. Uh, I would not mind Destiny Two being the platform, like World of Warcraft. The only thing that would piss me off is the fact that there's a two in the title. <laughs> I would love for them to just rebrand it, Destiny. Because that's what it is. Yeah, but then if you it's do that, Destiny. then don't you have to have all the Destiny 1 content in it as well? No. You know what? This is my game. <laughs> I do what I want. <laughs> um, no, I'd be fine with it because it's a game that um, that I can I can pick up and come back and play. Like I I didn't understand the, the World of Warcraft thing um, until something like this came along. Mm-hmm. In a in a genre that I can wrap my head around with characters that I enjoy, um, yeah. If this is a platform, then I'm I'm fine with it. At at this point, I almost just don't want the clean slate again. Like I'm like I'm so heavily invested into what I have in Destiny Two. Um, yeah, that it would be weird coming g- going back to nothing essentially. Yeah, going back to square one, like like they did a pretty decent job of of trashing all your shit in the beginning <laughs> of Destiny Two. Like, hey, all that stuff you worked hard for, yeah, they blew it up. So <laughs> you got to start over. They blew it up, including your level progress. So <laughs> you got to start <laughs> over again. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm I'm fine with it because that was the big thing with Destiny One to Destiny Two. People are like, oh, what about my guardian? Like, well, you can keep your the look of your guardian. Yeah, everything else <laughs> can uh, can stay on that Destiny 1 over there. So, okay. <laughs> so uh, that is it for this week's episode. Thank you guys very much for watching and listening. Of course, if you'd like to ask us questions when we post the post office, you can do that in our fan group on Facebook, densepixels.com slash fans make sure you subscribe or join there rather and you can engage in the discussions that we have every day uh, with our listeners uh, make sure you follow us on social media at dense pixels again no matter what pod catching app you use make sure you subscribe to us the nerd apocalypse black of black cinema and coming distractions and go over on youtube.com slash dense pixels click the subscribe button there as well uh, of course if you use twitch uh, you can find me at dense pixels brad terrence zepperish and 410 uh, Carrie is up. It's Carrie. And uh, I also use our YouTube channel to stream as well, seldomly. Uh, but when I do stream, it's often done on youtube.com slash dense pixels. So that's it for us this week. Again, thank you guys for listening to us talk, and we will talk to you later. See ya. You're watching the Dense Pixels YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button while you're here, and make sure you check out our weekly podcast where we discuss the latest gaming news and our impressions on what games we've been playing.